Hey guys, it's Shay from Wonderfully Chaotic, and I am coming to you today with um, a video that I've been promising for a little while, um, and just haven't really had the energy, I guess, to do it. Um, this has been a long journey, <laughs> to say the least, and I'm finally getting a chance to where I feel like I can talk about it, I think, uh, more openly. Um, if you follow me on social media at all, you saw briefly back in May, I, I made a post, a uh, very short blog post about um, having a molar pregnancy, um, a miscarriage. And <clears throat> I said I was going to do a video that like uh, talked about it more and I'm finally doing that now, and it's July. <laughs> but um, anyway, this will be kind of on the more serious side, I guess. Um, if this is your first time to my channel, hi, um, I'm Shay. I'm married. I have um, seven kids. I have a stepdaughter. I have three sons and three daughters. Uh, we homeschool, and our channel is just about homeschooling and family life, large family life, and... Uh, just all the things that interest us. So please check out other videos too while you're here if you'd like. Um, I have stuff written down on my computer, typed out on my computer. So if you see me like looking down like this during the video, it's because I'm looking at stuff that I don't want to forget because my brain is not working so great right now. So I can't remember anything unless I write it down. So yeah. Anyway, so we're just going to dive right into this. Okay, so to start things out, um, in April, I took a pregnancy test. Um, I had been having like funky cycles for since basically all year, like since January. Um, so I was pretty regularly taking pregnancy tests because of just how crazy things were. Um, I was just taking them regularly just to be on the safe side, I guess. Um, so I just assumed that it was going to be another negative test because I had been taking negative test after negative test for months and months, you know. Um, and surprisingly, it was not negative. <laughs> it was positive. Um, and I think that I actually gasped, like, because I was surprised. Um, this was definitely, you know, like a wanted pregnancy. Um, we were happy about it. Um, we've had some stressful, stressful times over the last few months, six, eight months or whatever. So this was like an exciting thing to look forward to. I was um, super invested in it, to be honest, because I had been so stressed out. I was excited for a new baby, you know. Babies do add stress and work and challenges, but they also bring you a lot of happiness, a lot of love. Um, I have always just loved everything to do with babies, pregnancy, birth, everything. So it was super exciting for me. So we were excited. Um, we made a doc I went ahead and made a doctor's appointment um, and they went ahead and scheduled an ultrasound because um, I was so unsure on my dates. Um, we went ahead and like tentatively planned like a cookout on Mother's Day, like just for fun with our family and friends and stuff. But we were also thought we would like break the news to them then because we'd have the ultrasound photo by then and it would be exciting. So that was our plan. Um, and then like about a week or so after we found out, um, I started having really bad pain, like sharp stabbing pains. Uh, mainly on like the right side of my body, but also sometimes like my stomach, just my whole lower half basically. Um, and it just kind of came and went. It wasn't all the time. It wasn't specifically any certain time. It just kind of came and went. And I just kept thinking like, I'm going to ask about it at my doctor's appointment. It's probably just like, I don't know, like growing pains or something. But honestly, I've birthed, given birth, birthed there. <laughs> Uh, can't talk, given birth to six children. So I kind of have an idea of what is normal, what is not normal, like, you know. Um, and so my husband was the one who was like, you know, is this something that feels, you know, normal to you? And I was like, no, finally, I had to admit, no, this doesn't feel normal. 
Um, and so he kind of convinced me that we should go ahead and go ahead of time and get it checked out. So I called the doctor's office, told them what was going on. Um, and they said maybe I should try going into urgent care if it seemed like, you know, something that was important. Um, and they said it did sound like it could be a multitude of things. It could be an infection. It could be appendicitis. It could be something more serious. So, um, they can't just diagnose it over the phone. So anyway, um, I called urgent care and urgent care said that they didn't have any ultrasound equipment and that that's probably what they would want to do, um, regardless of what it was. So they told me to go ahead and go to the emergency room. And the doctor's office had also suggested if I thought it was something imminent, like important, that I should go to the emergency room. So um, it was a Friday, I think. Yeah, it was a Friday. Um, we went ahead and went to the, uh, headed on into the emergency room. And on the way to the emergency room, I was like, oh, you know, this pain, so painful. Uh, we got to the emergency room, started walking inside, and I was like doubled over in pain by that point in time, just like super painful. Um, and I felt this like really weird, odd sensation. Um, got in there, went to the bathroom, and I realized I was bleeding very lightly, not super intense, like flowing blood, just like light. Sorry, trying to adjust my camera. <laughs> Um, so that's probably not a good sign. So we were worried, you know, but it wasn't super heavy or anything. And, um, so we'd been Googling, of course, because, you know, that's what you do in this day and age when you have something wrong. <laughs> and I was kind of worried that I might have an ectopic pregnancy where, um, where the baby has implanted in the wrong place, like in a fallopian tube or something like that. Some other area other than where it's supposed to be. So, um, I was worried about that. Um, the ER visit was very long as most of them usually are. Um, it was a Friday night. They were busy. Um, they did a bunch of different tests. They did an ultrasound. Um, the ultrasound was awful. It was the most awful one I have ever had in my entire life. And I've had a lot of them. Um, the sonographer, she was just silent. She was stone faced. She didn't want to talk. She didn't want to joke. She didn't want to do anything. And I, you know, that's just her personality. Maybe she was having a rough night. I don't know, but I needed like reassurance then that things were okay. And that was not helpful. And it was also super painful because I kept having these sharp stabbing pains and, you know, they're guiding this ultrasound wand around inside of you. And it was just like, I don't know. I was like, tearing up, crying, and she's like, are you all right? And I'm like, um, yeah, I just, you know, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so then they took me back to the room. We waited and waited and waited. The doctor came in, um, and he talked to us, and he said that, um, the person who read the ultrasound said, um, that there was a sac. Um, but that they didn't see a baby in there. They didn't see an embryo. Um, they thought maybe it was just too small to see, but due to all the other symptoms and things that I was having, they thought I was having a miscarriage um, and that I should follow up with my doctor just to make sure that everything passed as it should. And then that was that. They basically sent us on our merry way after that. Um, I'm like, I know... That's what they have to do, that's their job. I mean, there's not really a whole lot you can do when you're having a miscarriage, especially an early miscarriage. There's like no game plan for trying to save the baby. I mean, I know that's just the way it is, but it's still so frustrating for them to be like, well, you're losing your baby, um, bye. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know that's not what they did. He apologized, he said he was sorry, not that it's his fault. Um, and I know that's what has to happen, but it still is very upsetting to just have to like go home and deal with it. Um, the weekend that followed was uh, super long, painful. Um, I continued to have nausea, um, just these painful, almost like contraction-like feelings. Um, and this, you know, sharp stabbing pains, um, some bleeding, it wasn't um, super heavy still, and I kept thinking, like, surely this can't be it, because 
most of the things I've read about miscarriages, it seemed like there was lots of blood and you continued to bleed. And I had like a spurt of bleeding and then that was it. There wasn't like anything else. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe it's, I am not far enough along and that's what it is. But I thought it would be more, I guess, um, as morbid as that probably sounds. But so then we had, um, my birthday, um, came and went and, you know, that's a little disappointing because you're like, it's your birthday and you're supposed to be happy. And I was just like, uh, you know, here I am carrying this, whatever's going on inside of me. I don't know if I, we think it's a miscarriage. We think the baby's gone, you know, weird. Um, and the day after that, I think it was the day after my birthday, um, we had my doctor's appointment and we were just like preparing for the worst and assuming that we would get in there and it would be an empty ultrasound and it would be very sad and everything. But um, instead we were, um, oh, sorry, get my hand in the way. We were very shocked um, when the doctor saw not only the gestational sac, but also an embryo. There was a tiny little jelly bean shaped baby that was definitely visible on the screen um, to her eyes. She saw it first and she said, do you see this? And my husband and I both looked over and were like, wow, yes. We see that too. Um, the heartbeat wasn't showing up, but it was still very, very early. Um, she had given us a due date of December 26th, the day after Christmas, which was exciting. Um, and she thought that the ER was too quick with their diagnosis since, you know, she was still seeing an embryo and everything. Um, she said, obviously there's some sort of problem or you wouldn't have had this bleeding and this pain and whatever else, but there's definitely a baby there, you know, Okay, sorry about that. I had somebody here, so I had to stop for just a second. Um, where was I? Okay, yes, the doctor. Um, she said there was obviously something going on, but that she said, you know, we we're obviously pregnant. Um, she asked us if we could come back in two days. Um, she was going to run some more tests, some blood work, um, just see how my levels were, and take another look. So um, she also pointed out on the ultrasound that there was like these um, circle looking things on there that could indicate a molar pregnancy. But I honestly didn't really listen too much to that part because I was just so excited that we were still actually pregnant um, that I just kind of glossed over that, which in hindsight probably should have, you know, paid some more attention to that. But anyway, so I knew I shouldn't get my hopes up. Um, because, you know, we'd had so many other problems and didn't seem normal. But seeing the ultrasound and just having her be a little bit more calm and everything about it made me feel really good and like that things might be okay. Um, and so we had two days that went on and I bled a little bit more, felt kind of nauseous, had some more pain. Um, but otherwise was okay. So um, we had our next appointment um, and the office um, was very busy that day. There were lots of people there, um, just busier than normal. So that was, we had to wait a long time and just kind of stressed out and nervous. Um, she took us back and started another ultrasound. Um, you know, that little bit of hope I had was pretty much squashed because there was this, um, I forgot to mention earlier, the um, sac was not quite rounded like it should have been. It was kind of uh, squiggly shaped. It was kind of oddly shaped. So that was another thing that we kind of had going against us or whatever. Um, and when she did this second ultrasound, it had gone from being um, like squiggly to being like jagged edged, like very abnormal. Um, and it looked like it was filled with like Swiss cheese or like grape clusters, like all throughout it. And um, sorry, my cat, it's getting in my way. Down, down, down. So um, there was no embryo to be seen. It was just all these little circular cystic looking structures and um, that indeed meant that it was a molar pregnancy. Um, a molar pregnancy for those who don't know is caused because there is a chromosomal issue when the egg and the sperm meet. 
Um, there are two types of molar pregnancies. There are partial and complete. In a complete, there's no embryo or placental tissue. Um, and in a partial, there is an embryo. Come on, cat. Let's not do this. Yeah. As I was saying, and now the cat has lost my notes. <laughs> okay. Partial and complete. In a complete, there's no embryo. Um, in the partial, there's an embryo or there's tissue that starts to grow, but it can't survive. So mine appeared to be um, a partial because there had been an embryo. Um, the placenta doesn't form correctly and it instead develops into a bunch of cysts that were the Swiss cheese grape cluster looking things. That's, it's like tumors basically. So after talking with the doctor about what we should do, she told us that a DNC procedure um, would be the next step. Um, you've probably heard of DNCs before. Um, it removes the molar tissue from the uterus and it's commonly used to treat um, heavy bleeding or to clear up the uterine lining, uterine lining after a miscarriage or an abortion. So um, after it was done, I would have to have more tests and make sure everything was removed and make sure that there was no further complications because there are more complications that can come with molar pregnancy, which I will address probably in my next video because it's going to take a little bit more time. So I was going to have to have more testing and stuff after this was done. Um, that was a Friday when we had that appointment and we filled out the paperwork to have the procedure done the following Monday. Um, she didn't think that it was urgent, like I needed to get in like right then because we'd found it pretty quickly. Um, and some people will have a molar pregnancy and not realize it until they're much further along. And then it becomes a, a big problem. But since we were relatively early, she didn't feel that it was that urgent to like run in and get it done right then. So Monday. Uh, Sunday was Mother's Day. So um, that was very sad, uh, disappointing. Um, I felt pretty terrible. Um, we skipped church that day, um, and I, because I couldn't even face going really. And honestly, I haven't been back since then, just because I felt so out of sorts, I guess. Um, I don't think we've been back since then, but, um, I didn't want to go and just pretend that I was happy and pretend that, yay, it's Mother's Day when I have so much going on. Um, but my parents came down and brought us food and they brought my grandma down and we visited and it was really nice to just have that, um, kind of low key holiday. Um, it was really nice. Um, I just kept thinking about my surgery because I had never had surgery before ever or ever been put out for anything. Um, never had anything like that and I was terrified and I just kept thinking like what if I die which I know is ridiculous and it sounds ridiculous now but when you've never gone through something and you're looking at it you're it freaks you out so I know that I was probably being dramatic and I'm sure my husband probably got tired of hearing me worry about stupid stuff but I was really scared and so um let me give a little tip if you're going through something like this. Here's what you should not do. Google anything. You should not look up anything on Google because it will make things 10 times worse. So um, the things that did help me were uh, my husband to tell me to stop looking up stuff online. Um, talking to him like about the fears that I had. Um, checking in with some people that were close to me. I didn't really tell a whole lot of people. Um, what was going on and it wasn't because like I don't like them or I don't care for them I just didn't know what to tell them especially when we were in the midst of like not knowing what was going on um, we didn't really know what to tell people it's awkward to tell people we think we're having a miscarriage but we don't know for sure uh, there might be a baby there it just it feels strange so I didn't really open up to very many people at all about it when we were going through it because it was just a weird situation. So um, carrying on, we checked into the hospital Monday afternoon 
And can I just say that it's kind of a big pain in the butt for when you're worried about something and stressing out and they want to check you in and they want to talk about like how much money you owe them for the surgery and stuff and how much can you pay today and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I've never had surgery in my life before. I'm freaking out. I don't really want to worry about how much money I owe and how much the insurance is going to pay and stuff. I just want to get it over with and you can send me a bill. And that's basically what I told them. <laughs> So they put me in an outpatient room. They got all my information. They had me change into this super uncomfortable gown that had like plastic stuff on the inside of it or something. Um, and then I had to take out all my jewelry and uh, my dental appliances, all that stuff. Um, they wheeled me back into the surgery room and I was like panic central. And I was like shaky and just like freaking out internally because when I get nervous and stuff, I don't like, I'm not like, ah, like screaming, running around, freaking out visibly, I think. Most of mine is like internal, like panic. Um, anyway, they had me, they took me back to the surgery room and they had me move from my bed to this table that the procedure was going to be done on. Um, and they told me they were going to give me something to help me relax, probably because I was like, looked like this, freaking out. <laughs> and um, they covered me up with a warm blanket and they had like music playing. I don't even remember what kind of music it was, but it was like not, it was nice. It was, um, it was nice. Not, not, <laughs> can't talk. <laughs> Uh, they put the mask over my mouth and my nose. Um, they told me to just take deep breaths. And one of the nurses was like making some jokes, like funny jokes, not like things that were upsetting me. Um, and I only took maybe like two or three breaths. Um, and then I just remember hearing the doctor's voice, like waking me up in the recovery room. So it was not like, it wasn't that scary. It wasn't that bad. Um, I really worried for nothing. <laughs> Um, the doctor talked to me for just a little bit. She told me that everything went well. Um, it was not a very long procedure. Um, I stayed in the recovery room for like half an hour, maybe. I don't know if it was even that long. And then they took me back, uh, to the room that I started in. Come on, kitty. He does not want to help. He's taking screenshots on my, can't my, not my camera, my computer. Why did you do that? Anyway, so they had me wait in that room for probably like 30, 40 minutes or so. They had me make sure that like I could take some drinks, um, go to the bathroom, all that stuff. And then they told me I was good to go home. So I felt groggy. I remember that groggy and like kind of out of it from the anesthesia. And I was sore, um, but I was, I mean, okay. I wasn't like in super huge amounts of pain or anything like that. Um, I do remember kind of crying on the way home because I told my husband, it reminded me so much of how you feel like after you've had a baby. You know, you're tired, you're kind of sore, um, but there's no baby. And so that was kind of sad. Um, so yeah, in the next video that I'm going to make, I will talk about the, um, the complications, um, how I've been feeling since then, and then maybe some resources for people who have experienced this. So, um, I'm going to try and upload these like at the same time or within relatively short amount of time. So you don't have to like wait around to find out like what happened. Um, so I'm going to try and this will be part one and then I will have part two for the next one. So, um, be on the lookout. Um, and let me know if you've ever went through anything like this, um, in the comments, let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys in the next video.